folks, we're here to do the much anticipated um, little video about using the rigid heddle with our pre or ergonomic sleigh stands. Okay, I've done it with the regular reeds, but I haven't talked anywhere near this with the rigid heddle. I and this is mainly for people who use a warping board or a warping mill for a rigid heddle. And you're thinking, well, I don't do that. I mean, you can still use them, but you need to have the warp pre you know, already ready to go on this. You can't direct warp. So it is mainly for the warping board or the warping mill. Okay, so I'm going to go through the step process, and there's a couple of things that you have to do first before you even can set this up because rigid heddles are real different in a sense of which way their heddles are. Stainless steel reeds don't. There is no back, front, up, or down, but there is on rigid heddle. I have a knitter's loom, and specifically, the knitter's loom is real specific because the bottom part of the rigid heddle is longer than the top. So I'm going to show you how I went about this and just follow it all the way through because then you'll understand why. So over here on my knitter's loom, I have a 20 inch, and here is the uh, rigid heddle. I have actually put it in here, made sure that this was the front of my loom. Okay, I need to make sure that I'm doing it from the front. And I took a sticky note right here and I put top, front of loom. Okay, so I'm actually just going to stick it up here on the top, front of the loom. And then I can take it out. It won't look this way in the sleigh blocks, but please do it this way. Whatever loom you have, put a sticky note at the top, put front of the loom. Okay. If you don't, you might be taking it out and that might not be good. So over here, we're going to come over here to the ergonomic sleigh stand blocks or here. All right, so I have my reed and I have that wonderful note there and I must have that right here. Okay, now if you notice on my sleigh blocks, they can be whatever width you want it to be. But if you try to warp full width, these don't fit. They, they're not able to balance and you to reach these actual uh, slits in your rigid heddle. So to get around all of that, I have two warping sticks that are longer than my reed. And what I'm going to do is rubber band them. So from here, I'm going to start with the bottom one because I actually have more of a piece here and it's easier to do that. So put a uh, rubber band on your stick. To save time, you can actually just go ahead and do it twice. And then when I come over here, I'm going to take these and all I'm going to do is slide it on. So that's attached. Not permanently, but just attached right now. All right, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn this one around, do the same thing. If I need to, see that's loose, so if I need to do it again, just do it again. Because all you're trying to do is adhere the stick to the bottom and the top of your rigid heddle. So there's my bottom one. So you can see that actually will hold it. Now I need to do the top. On a knitter's loom, you don't have a whole lot to play with, so be very careful that you do get it secured. The tighter the rubber band, probably the best because it will actually really hold. And I'm kind of torquing that one in to make sure this one holds. All right, let me do the other side and then we'll be ready to slay. Now, before I put this up here, I want to show you a little bit about the warp because this will really be in the way for you to see what I'm going to do with my warp. Okay, so all I've done right now is I've got top of the loom and I have my rubber bands. I've not placed this on the ergonomic sleigh blocks. So, most of the time people say, why are you pre-slaying on a rigid heddle? Okay, this is a tensile warp, all right, all solid. So, most of the weavers ask me why I'm using pre-slay blocks with the actual rigid heddle. When I did this warp, it's 10 cell, and I actually did six over six or seven yards, so that was long. I couldn't get that direct warping from my peg to the loom. I'd have to spread out that far. It was faster and easier because of the size of the yarn to do it on my warping mill. So then I actually have my whole warp in a bag right here, 
and I have a cross. A cross is very important when it comes to using your warping mill or your warping board. If you don't have a cross, none of this is going to work. So you have to have that and you have to understand why you have to have that. Okay, so this is about using these blocks, not necessarily telling you about the warp and how to put a cross in it. Okay, so I'm going to pretend like all of y'all understand that part. <laughs> so next, before I do anything, I have this part and I have my bag and I'm just going to take this part and I'm going to drop it over the table so I actually have just the cross part right here okay and these are my leash sticks which you need these too take your brick this is actually a great idea take a brick in a plastic bag it's a red brick or a sock and what I'm doing is I just put it here and that actually assists or helps me pull on this without anything coming uneven. All right, so it's so important to get your leash sticks, um, these are the sticks with the holes in the ends of them, in here. I need one in the back, one in the front, and they're going to represent the cross uh, when I take this leash string out. So it's easier for me to go this way than with this part that has the most yarn. So I'm coming here and I'm going to basically take this and as I split this you can see that color is very, if you use a, a different color you're going to be able to see that so you can see I've gone all the way through to the other side if you want to you can put your finger in there like that so what I've done is that's the back cross because that's where this one is so you can actually take your leash stick put it in there like that and check it does not hurt to keep checking I've gone all the way across so that's technically my back one then I'm gonna come over here and do the front you can come through this way or this way either way I'm now gonna split it and I'm going through here all the way to the end I don't want to invert it all I want to do is put my finger in there and then I'm looking. So here's the other stick. So when I do that, so now technically I have a front cross and now I have my back cross. Okay. Before I do anything, before I take this out, I need to tie these together on this side and this side. If I lose this, then all of this is a wash. This is so important. Your cross is probably the most important thing. Some people use shower curtain hooks. Some people use any kind of string. I just have a bunch of these laying around. So I always tie it to one, go through here. I do leave at least about a finger's width between them because you want your threads to slide. If you push these together, it's too tight. Okay, so from here, I'm going to tie this one loosely but snug see how I can got about a finger's width now I'm going to do the other side just like this okay so another thing once you have this done and before I take my actual original cross out there's something else I do to this and once again it's these crazy rubber bands that I use so if you go on this shaft that's right here this is where the sticks are going to sit put your rubber band on go in between the two sticks okay in between and then just loop it over and so this one is secured so they're not going to flop or they're going to si go side to side so that's very helpful anything you can do to have an extra hand when you don't have one use it so actually this one's pretty pretty good um, some people will slide these on the sticks and go the other way. I just think you need to secure it. it makes no difference. Just secure it. All right, so once we have this, now we're almost ready to slay it into the reed, okay? Now, this is what you have to do with the reed. We have all this set, now the reed. So when you have your rigid huddle, the top of it doesn't sit like this. Turn it upside down. Make the top of the loom at your stomach at your stomach okay this is the correct way and you'll understand it once you see it on the loom 
I made the mistake not thinking because I had an enter's loom up, down, backwards, forwards. It does matter. It does matter. So that whatever, wherever your sticker was, turn it upside down, turn it towards your stomach. All right. Now, I need to take this off <laughs> to do some slaying, but I'm just going to do that so that you understand that this still is that particular side. Okay. All right. So now... To do all of this, when I take my cross out, I'm holding very snug, and I have a little tie here. I'm going to pull that one out gently. I'm going to pull the next one out, because these were in groups of the way I counted it. And I'm going to pull this one out. Now, as any weaver knows, that when they use a warping board, you're going to have at the very beginning of your warp here, And this is tiny. This is what I used to start with. If you notice, this one has a loop around it, and that's what went around my dowel to my warping board. So I call this a single, okay? That's a single one. My next one in the cross, if I pull some of these out, and I'm just going to pull, you can see this one is connected. It actually is a loop. So this is a double. If you're used to doing rigid heddles, you're normally used to putting a double in a slit. There's your double right there. It just happens to be already ready for you, okay? The only one that's different is this one, okay, which is what I call a single. Notice I do have a larger loop here because that's what's going to go on the back stick, so you need to have that, and I'm going to show all of that, okay? So from here, to get it all ready, I'm going to pull all my threads up, so I have a single and now I've got these right here and when I pull these this is where a lot of people have they, they get it it gets all it looks jumbled but it's not so the best way to do it is don't grab this and yank because you're trying to pull all hundred and something threads at one time you wouldn't do that with your loom so what I do is I always hold right here on the first cross and I literally grab just a section. If you if you feel like you got too much, grab a little bit. And so when I'm pulling this, I'm holding it, I pull the top and the bottom, top, bottom. It's almost like a seesaw motion. So when it comes through, the I don't lift the brick. If there's any issue, it's because it's jamming at the bottom or the top. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Gently, gently. I'm not doing it fast. And then when it comes out, it's going to come all the way. So what you're going to see is your cross. These couple of loops, I guarantee you, are going to be the ones that are right here. So once again, I'm going to pull all this through. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And remember, this is tinsel, and it is slick, slick, slick. So it wants to slide. I also see here, this is my other end thread. Remember when you start, you may have one here if it was an even number. So I'm going to lay him aside so I don't lose it. Pull, 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 pull. Gently. Bottom, bottom, top. So if you look, they're all laid pretty nicely right here. In your, in your leash sticks. If you lose this, you lose this. Must keep this. All right, so I have my warp pulled through. Now, where to start? So first, you should know how wide your project is. And in my case, it's about 11, 11 and a half, in, a, in and around there. Most people have already marked the center of their um, rigid heddle just because when they're slaying things, they like to know if they're getting in the center or not. If you haven't done that, measure it. This is a 20 inch, but it comes out a little shorter, 19 and a half. Find the center. This actually, I've already done it. There was a black dot right here, and there was a black dot right here. And everybody says, oh, why do you do that? And I said, well, I know this project is 11 inches, so half of 11, six is 12, so half of it is five and a half. So what I'm doing, starting from the center, going over five and a half. This should be the beginning of my warp. From here, five and a half, five and a half. And when I do this, 
I don't start center because otherwise you've got to count all these and know they're the center. So I always just go from the center over. Now to mark this part right here, if I'm doing five and a half, which is right there, you can put a string in there, but a lot of times I'll just take the re the excuse me the tape measure and put it here. So I know that's my my starting point here over. All right. So I use a real slick. Um, it, this is for regular looms, um, but it fits really nicely in here. It's very slick. It doesn't grab. It's soft. It doesn't usually mar up. But these are really nice reed hooks. Um, all right. So I, right now I have my starting point five and a half inches over because this is an 11 inch scarf. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking. Uh, and in a rigid heddle, you're only slaying the slits. You're not doing anything with the holes because we're not doing that yet. So I'm going to stick my reed, uh, my slay hook in here, pull it through. Notice it goes over and down in. Okay, that's important. All right. This one was my single. Remember, it had a big enough loop on it. I have a fictitious stick down here. This is pretending to be the back beam. If I don't take these and put them on here like this, then they're just all laying there and they're jumbled up and I've got to sort through them. So what I'm doing is staying organized. This will make sense once I show you how to go to the rigid heddle, okay? So that's my first, that's my single, okay? My next one, sometimes I'll take this and you can see how I put my hand in here. You know which string is next because of the cross. So if this one was over, this one will be the next one. So what I'm doing is when I pull this one out, you can see it staggers. Once you've done this a couple of times, start with the baby warp just to see how it would work. It's amazing how, how organized the threads are if you have a cross. So if you can see, first one, second, third, fourth, fifth. All right, so once again, this was my single because it's by itself. These two right here are connected with a loop because I worked it on the warping mill. But you can see, first, it's, it's a woven string if you think about it, over, this one's under, and this one's back. So it goes this one, this one, this one, that's the next one, then the next one. When you're actually slaying this on a pre-slay, you're really just concerned with two because these are connected. So when I take these two right here, the next slit I'm gonna go in is here. Not this one that had the first single. This one, I loop, I pull it through, and as I pull it through, I have a loop. That goes on my fictitious back beam stick. Just drape it. And it is, an un it's, it is even, it may not look it right now, and I'll show you how. Next one, make sure you're in the right one. Here, loop, pull it through. Add it to the stick. I have, to make this process go a little faster than it is, I will sometimes organize these ahead of time. I'll put like five in a row. So that's one, two, because they're going to be treated as one when you take this. So then it'll be, this is next. If you, since you have it in your hands, that's the third one. And tin sail is not one I would start with because it is very slick. I just have a special project for this. If it looks like it's uneven like that, sometimes it's because one is in front of the other. So they come out. See how? Follow the cross. Don't cut them out of here. This is what you're following. All right. So here's my next one. Put it in the slit. Put it on the stick. Next one. Put it in the slit. And most people will do direct warping. This is because I have a very longer warp. I'm doing two scarves at once, all one color. It took me no time to do it. So right there, I've already done that. So the next one I'm going to go through. This will be through 11 inches. So what we're going to do is let me do a couple of slaying real quick, and then when I get to the end, then I'll show you how you take it all to the actual rigid heddle, but this is the complete start of it. This will extend the rigid heddle, so I hope you see the whole process.
So as you can see, we have already slayed a majority of the rigid heddle, and I have a few more to do. Um, doing this in the rigid heddle allows you to also have some checks and balances that would actually aid a weaver to know if they have the correct number of threads or if they forgot something. And actually, this is a chance to add stuff. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but just to cover the basis, we already know what, this was a good point right here, this was my single. Once again, I had a large loop. This one goes on that um, preliminary back stick. Just to check, in your rigid heddle, if you measured it, what do I have? It's, uh, it's just about 11 inches, and that's about where I was assuming that I had. I couldn't remember exactly the numbers, but that's another way to see. You just want to make sure that your warp is not slayed off center. Because remember, in rigid heddle, you never take it out of this once we're done. We're actually just going to carry one of those over and put it in the hole. So as in the stainless steel reeds, they do come out. This one does not. All right. So I am 11 inches. I've got that. So the next thing I'm going to do is, this looks like a major mess right here, um, but it's not a mess. Um, I put it on one as I went, so it's not. So what I'm going to do is just gently pull it straight out. I can take my hands and just kind of, you don't want it to come off, so I'm actually holding it, but I'm just going to straighten it out a little bit. And so pretty much, well, these are all going to be the same lengths. If you've noticed, they're pretty much well the same lengths. This one's going to go on the back uh, bar, the back warp stick. And then remember, this is the back. And as we wind it, that the end of the warp will be the front. And I'd like to show you that part because it makes sense why uh, the rigid heddle was turned the specific way. All right, so everything is set up. It's ready to go on the loom, but I need to dismantle things. So at this point, because this is rigid heddle, I still want to keep these, okay? I can show you how to work with these on a rigid heddle, even though you really don't need them, because technically I have everything slayed here. I did use these one time when I had a variegated warp, and then I knew which ones that were going to go in the hole, one in the slip, one in the hole. So these do come in handy if you need that. But to remove everything, you can undo everything or it's just easier just to cut them. All right, these I don't need to cut because basically I'm just sliding them off because they're just resting on top of that, okay? So the one back here on my leash sticks, cutting, all right? So from here, I don't wanna drop this part. So what I'm gonna do is roll this off, roll this one off, roll this one okay so now this one is not attached to the sticks we can remove that one those were just the support sticks for this okay so now if we think about it this is my reed I'm just going to do this so you can see so nothing's getting tangled it was laying this way this is the last bar so I'm going to actually hold it like this and then I'm going to take my leash sticks and I'm going to grab them from the back side. Take the brick off, grab the bag. So I'm going to walk around here if I can. And I have my bag. Everything is like sandwiched together. And then it's so easy. Don't drop it. <laughs> and now I'm going to go to the loom and I'll show you how this goes on. Okay, so I have my knitter's loom here and I have my sandwiched warp over here. It's just another little trick I've been using. Um, your knitter's loom has to be flat. Um, it's important to beam it that way. It cannot be at the angle that it normally is when you're weaving. So I use these. Um, I do make sure that this is down, not up, since I don't want to poke myself. So I'm going to slide it underneath here, and then I'm just going to squeeze. So what this is doing is that it's just squeezing the loom to the table, okay? It'll accommodate different thicknesses. So it, let's say if you wanted to do the edge here, you could go from the edge right here and you would just squeeze, okay? So that would hold it there. A lot of people only have like one of those little clamps and sometimes I prefer 
two, just to make sure nothing is actually going to move on me. Okay, move this one toward the front. So it's secure, it's not going to move, because this is where I'm going to actually start my warp, okay, as I put it on. All right, so I'm going to the front of the loom now. I've got it, my loom on my table, and I'm coming here. All right, so just to make sure you understand, this was the way it was down on your sleigh block, so it's important. So when I do this, that's not the way it goes on the loom. So I'm going to literally flip it all the way around. So with this... The bag has to go here first, okay? And then all of this is gonna be turned around. So bag, I'm turning the whole thing around. So the bag is here, leash sticks, rigid heddle. This stick right here is actually the back stick right here for the loom, okay? If you can envision that, this is the back stick. So when I take my reed, and I put it into the neutral position here, you can see as I flip it up, that was the top front. You can see that that's my top front. If I hadn't, then the longer pieces would have been at the top. So I'm gonna leave this here real quick, just so you see that. Leash sticks here, bag of warp here. It has to go in this succession. All right, now, just to show you real quick how to put this on, it's a cinch because I'm not cutting the warp, I'm not doing anything to it. I'm gonna adhere it to my stick back here. All right, so um, a little trick on Ashfords. If everybody has an Ashford, um, they have these permanent ties from the back beam to the, warp, the back warp stick. Um, when you're doing uh, pre-slay, you actually need a back stick that slides very easily in and out. And to get around that, I took one of my warp sticks and I just cut it the same size as this one. And in my case, I have floor looms, so I used a Texol heddle, which these work really great because they're strong and they're not going to break. Now, it wouldn't be wise to buy a whole pack because there's a hundred of them, but you can use any string. Make sure that three of them are the same lengths. So all I did was I came around the back stick like this, okay? And there is actually a hole because of the way the heddle is. I'm actually doing a slip knot so that it stays in there. So I've come around and I'm just sticking it inside here and I'm going to do a slip knot so that I actually have two ends. You can do it any way you want. This was just easier for me. All right, so I've slip knotted the other one just to show you. I tethered it to the back stick that's permanently attached, and this is my movable one. So this one's going to slide back and forth, but this is where I'm going to transfer my warp from the pre-slay to this one, okay? The easiest way to do it, once again, you should have the center marked, okay? Once you find the center of your reed, just all you need to do is separate like this, separate, take, you can take, you can take your hand and just put it in here and actually just do a loop like this. So if I take this, I can take this one and slide it on here. So I'm just replacing it, but I don't want to let go of it because if I do and I lose it, then I've lost that loop. So I've actually got, I just looped this, plus that little small one, over this back stick. The same with this one. Take off that last one. You can take this, and I'll slide this one off just to show you. If it's small enough, you just take it, slide it off, slide it on. Okay? This stick, then, is not even used. I don't need it anymore. I need to secure this one. And as you can see, everything now is actually on this back stick. Now, does it look nice and neat? Not yet, okay, but it will. All right, so that's going to stay here. I'm going to go to the front of the loom and just give it a yank and straighten these out. All right, so I've got my leash sticks and i got my bag of warp. And I got looks like a mess back here, but it's not. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna take my bag of warp, and best thing to do is I just drop it over the table so I don't have that in my hand. If I take this and pull, 
like this ever so gently, these sticks are gonna slide. You can see how they slide very easily. And so when I do this, I'm gonna hold it. Back here, sometimes I'll take that brick again, set it right here, sorry. Take the brick, put it right here, just so it won't fall off the table. And then if I have enough tension, it's enough to come back over here because it's a loop. All I'm gonna do is, is, is just pull them apart. I'm just taking my finger, putting them in between, spreading them out. It's important to kind of spread them out a little bit because you want your tension to be perpendicular. You want this thread to come straight into the back beam. And so as I take my, you can see how that's beginning to straighten out. I'm kind of one of these perfectionists and I really want things to be pretty straight when I, before I wind my warps on. Um, but they're not tied to the back beam, they're just looped around the back beam. So therefore, it's much easier. If you need to readjust your tension, just grab the loop and pull on it. But what that's doing is basically straightening each one of these out to the back. A lot of people, when they start a new technique, it seems to take forever. And I know the video seems long because I'm trying to show every, some of this becomes so natural for me, I don't even think about what's next because it's just a technique I've always used um, on floor looms. And then when I started doing longer warps on rigid heddles, this really did come in handy because I'm not having to do one item or two items. You know, I can do longer warps. So once this is on, then I'm actually ready to crank, because that's pretty good. That's, that's, you don't need to really get it any straighter. All right, so now we're basically ready to crank it on. Um, I have talked to several customers on the phone that if you want to, you can divide your warp into two, what I call horses reins or ponytails. Um, if you have a long enough table, you can add bricks to the weight. Or you can hang a weight off the table, say example of, filled water bottle or something. If I did these on the table, I would take this, lay it on it, do like this, so that it's actually tethered. So this is gonna be the same tension as the next brick over here. But as you crank, since I can use this one, you actually are just gonna now crank. Making sure that this one, because it's tethered on there, is flat. You don't want it to be riding high. And as you crank, you're just gonna keep going all the way around, okay? And this one should lay right on top because I've made my strings long enough so that it would fit, okay? And then holding that. If you don't care which one of these are first and second, which you normally don't in rigid heddle, this is mainly used just to slay it and just to do it from the warping mill to the board, to the box. You can take these out and that actually will uh, be one less thing you have to worry about, okay? But that's basically the process to getting it from the sleigh blocks onto the loom. So good luck, I hope it works. Um, I've had great success with it. All right, so just to be clear, to make sure everybody understands the process. Once we have this slayed, okay, it's the same, you go back to rigid heddle process. If I had a single here, I can put it in this hole or this hole, it makes no difference. But if I start slaying this way, that's the way I continue. So this would go in a hole, the next one has two. One stays in the slit, one goes in the hole. One stays in the slit, but you have to beam it first before you do this, okay? And at the very end of your warp, just like you would on direct warping or either on a warping board or mill, you always have a loop. So at the very end, you're gonna have to cut this to be able to individualize, take one out and put it in each one. So that's the only way you can do that. But right now, I'm just in the process of cranking on six yards, okay? So I have to do all of that first, and basically they're in neutral, okay, first. Like I said, I don't really need these. I can take them out. I was just showing you that when you crank, 
they actually don't uh, bog down your warp as long as you have a little bit of space between your leash sticks, okay? So we're going to beam it and then hopefully get it slayed for you and then new projects are coming on this warp.